Welcome to part 2 of the video series creating C project in Visual Studio integrated development environment. If you haven't seen part 1, I will recommend you to please watch part 1 before proceeding with the part 2. The link is at the top right corner. Please do watch part 1 if you haven't done so far. In the part 2, we'll be touching a little more on the how to organize the uh, uh, overall C uh, source code. Uh, with the help of folder structure, better folder structure, and we'll see more about the filters, project filters, and project files, how they are going to affect uh, with the changes that we are going to do uh, in the folder structure. We'll also see the platforms, uh, how to delete the platforms, uh, probably adding a new platform, and more. More importantly, uh, what is the debugging versus the release option? So welcome to part two. In this section, we will be seeing some more organized way to create and maintain the project, especially when there are large number of source files involved. And also uh, uh, there is a multiple people working on the same project uh, and updating the source files at a given time. We'll take the one hypothetical example like autonomous car uh, where we have a different models like engine, powertrain, transmission, infotainment, smart sensors, body control, and so on so we can uh, we can uh, consider that uh, uh, maybe at least one team is working uh, on each module right and they are updating the software so in the uh, this is a complex scenario and how basically we can manage uh, that in the visual studio project so we can go back to our visual studio application and uh, <clears throat> uh, i will close this uh, previously created project by going to the file and close solution now I want to create a new solution uh, called exercise underscore zero two. So I'll create a new project with the same way that we have created our first project, uh, giving the path. See project. Let's see. In this case, exercise zero two. Okay, it has created the uh, uh, the solution and the project for us, and you can also uh, verify that in the uh, uh, your project directory. Okay, uh, we are good here. So uh, uh, as I mentioned, you can delete the resource files here, and uh, now we have the source files and the header files. So let me do one more change. So I don't want this uh, source files and the header files. I will uh, <coughs> delete the header files and. For the source files, I, I can rename this to uh, source only, and I will go back to my uh, the project directory. So here uh, we can see that uh, in the earlier scenario we have our, our debug file, uh, release folders, and the the source code and the project files. Uh, everything uh, was on the root directory, but I just want the project uh, source code to be. Uh, they uh, should be there in the uh, separate folder i can create a, a source folder and inside that i want my uh, source files correct so as as you as we see that we have a different model so uh, it's better we can create a separate uh, folder for every model so i will create separate folder for every model So note that uh, in the embedded uh, world where we are developing this software for the uh, uh, some uh, some microcontroller based uh, applications, the hardware uh, we often have some operating system on which the entire application is running. So uh, in most of the embedded uh, projects, you can also see uh, the operating system files uh, which we basically compile with our application. So I created this uh, all the project folders. Uh, sorry all the model folders are uh, inside my source file right and <clears throat> I can go ahead here and I can create the filters 
right so the first filter i want to create is the uh, let's say uh, go uh, to the source right click add and new filter so you can create the engine fill engine module as one of the filter and uh, in the same source fold i can basically create the new item uh, that is the main dot c file which we have created earlier the similar way we will be creating here and in this scenario i'm not do not want that into the uh, root folder but i want that to be under this source so i will select the source folder and i will add that file in the inside the source okay now in the main let's uh, uh, write our uh, software that we have already written okay now i have written the logic just to print the hello world uh, like we did in the uh, earlier uh, exercise uh, but now we, we can compile and can build the solution in the debug platform perfect so it's got created uh, now let's say what uh, so we uh, we can add various filter here uh, let's say engine model so in the in the engine model we want to add some functionality related to the engine right so let's basically start with the uh, adding one file so i can directly open the uh, folder and i can add the file like this a text file but in this scenario i will just change the extension to dot c so that it will become a c file okay now i will uh, open this dot uh, c file uh, in the visual studio as one of the window uh, and then I will uh, let's say add some piece of code to get the engine's speed Okay So for that I will use the function uh, get engine speed and it will return the value uh, Which is the engine speed which is in integer format. So let's add a function engine speed And it will do it will not be not having any arguments okay uh, so here i will just declare one constant speed for this demonstration purpose and i will return the speed at the end okay and in the main dot c uh, i want uh, that uh, that speed here let's say in this main application and i want to print that engine speed so in real world it might be some, some uh, real uh, instantaneous speed coming from some different uh, uh, module or maybe from the different sensor uh, but here we are basically just uh, giving as a constant value for the demonstration purpose <coughs> so uh, let's Try to get the speed so for that I will create one variable here like integer engine speed I will declare as a zero and then I will print the engine speed in the one of the new statement like let's say engine speed is and I want to print in the integer format so we'll get the engine speed variable printed here semicolon but uh, we need to uh, get the speed from the engine model right so let's call the uh, engine get engine speed function okay and let's compile build a solution okay so we got one error here uh, which I was expecting so the get engine speed in uh, referenced in the function is unresolved so the the program or the the build uh, process is not able to figure out where this function is right but we have all that function uh, already created in the engine speed.c 
but uh, this project doesn't know that right so there will be multiple files in your uh, multiple directories in your project but the project uh, will not know that unless and until you uh, include the, those files or uh, folders in the project so i need to add that file into the project so that project will consider that file for the build process so i'll go to the filter engine module i will right click add now in this case the existing item because the, i already have the engine speed dot c now you can go to the source engine then engine speed so once you add this option you will build the solution okay now in this case it is succeeded right so when you hit run this in the local windows debugger you can see uh, probably the hello world and then your engine speed is 900 awesome this is what we are passing from the, the engine model right okay so uh, what's happening at the uh, uh, the filter or the project files right when we create this particular uh, filter here so let's go back to our project directory and uh, we can open the uh, project file and filter file in the probably the notepad plus plus and you can see the project file uh, you still have these different project configurations and uh, some some more configurations here that we can skip and at the last you can see uh, we have uh, not only the main.c the relative path uh, from the root project so from the root project which is exercise uh, underscore zero two uh, the, the the path is source backslash main dot slee and similarly you can see the engine speed dot c is included from the uh, the source slash engine folder right so this is how uh, we are getting these files included and at the filters uh, dot filter side you can see uh, uh, you have the source filter created because we have created that source filter uh, and uh, inside this source filter we have the main file which is coming from the uh, the source folder right uh, and in the in the next filter which is a engine module and inside the source right uh, so this is a new filter uh, like engine module and you can see uh, the engine.c file is getting added into this new filter so you can note that the filter name engine module is not the same as the the folder so there is no direct link with the folder and the model so you can add probably the same engine.c file in the the source folder as source filter as well right okay now going back to your project uh, now you can you can see how we basically added the uh, different folder structure so that the engine team will work on this this files only so similar way you can add the various uh, other filters and then the team can work on those folders inside the project directory and then you can then you can include those files as and when those are available uh, integrate into your bigger project and you can build a project uh, uh, moving forward now let's talk about the uh, different solution configurations we have so for that you can either go to the configuration manager uh, by clicking uh, this configuration solution configuration option or you can right click on the project and go to the properties so you can see uh, this that at top uh, you can see uh, that there are different configurations like debug and release and uh, the platform that we have is win32 that is the x86 and uh, x64 so you can go to the configuration manager and here you can see what are the configurations available uh, so you can basically add more configurations if required so often a time when you develop the embedded applications uh, you you don't uh, off, uh, run the uh, embedded application on the PC based environment right so that application will go to the target hardware uh, on board and it will run the embedded application from there so uh, it's often you need to create a new platform here 
uh, let's say if you're creating the, uh, the application for the the uh, Arduino board then you will create some configurations for the Arduino board or the the, the targeted controller for the Arduino and then uh, you will add the the solution platform also so here uh, uh, we can we not only can add but we can also delete the configuration or the so uh, platform <coughs> So I, I need to, uh, I don't want the x64, so I can simply go edit and delete the x64. Now uh, when you save all, then you can see, you can only see x86 configurations uh, for both debug and release solution configurations, right? And so now what is the difference between debug and release? So debug is often uh, used when you're developing the applications uh, you want to debug. So the, the, the build process will not optimize. Uh, it will put the more data into your final build so that you can get uh, like the uh, object names, the variables and the uh, uh, internal variables, functions and uh, so on so that you can uh, debug the information. Uh, but uh, when you have done with the uh, development and you feel that your, so your code is now ready for the release and you can go to the release and you can uh, uh, build the project and you can release the final output files. Uh, often a time uh, you can see that uh, if you uh, know the concept of breakpoints, you can add a breakpoints or watch in the uh, debug environment so that uh, you can able to uh, uh, break the break the uh, programming flow and you can basically debug uh, the, uh, the the piece of code that you uh, have a problem or you want to understand more uh, if you go to the release uh, and you, if you want to uh, try to debug you will basically not hit this break point you can see okay so in the release configuration uh, it's still hitting the breakpoint so probably the reason why it is hitting the breakpoint is uh, on our project configuration so if you go to the uh, project properties uh, you can see under release uh, you probably have this go to the linker and debugging options you have this uh, debug generate a debug info option uh as the uh enabled so i just go ahead and uh, select as a no because in the release environment we don't need any debug uh, information so we'll apply this change and probably run the uh, build one more time probably the local window debugger and you can see now the breakpoint will not heat because we disable the debug information Okay, so you can see the breakpoint is not hit. Uh, the breakpoint will not currently be hit. No symbols have been loaded for this document. So in the release environment, there's no symbols available for debugger to basically debug. And the program is run up to its end, uh, to the while loop. Now, even if you see the size of the EXEs in the debug and uh, release, so if if you see the debug uh, build, then the size of the EXE that we have generated is around 39.5 uh, KB, around 40 KB. And if you the, see the same application we build in the release uh, configurations, uh, the size would be uh, just 9 KB compared to the 40 KB. So this is uh, what uh, we can see is that in the release the program is optimized. Thanks for watching this video and if you have any specific details to see or any topics please let me know in comment section and if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for future videos. Thank you.